Okay, hi. So this video is going to be on um, Cauchy's integral formula, and it should just be one video because Cauchy's integral formula is one of those rare occasions in maths where you see a hideous-looking formula and you think, oh, "God, God, this is going to be horrendous to prove," and it's actually really, really easy to prove. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so let's just state Cauchy's theorem so far. Uh, firstly, so it says that the value of a function at a complex number a is given by an integral and 1 over 2 pi i rather at the front times the integral of f of uh, f of the other complex variable over w minus a dw over a curve gamma where the curve gamma so if this is the complex plane the curve gamma needs to be positively orientated like that and it needs to be uh, enclose the point A. So A can be any point inside there. So this basically tells you that if you take the contour integral around this curve, this is the curve gamma of the function f of w. So basically, you take every, you break this down into little complex numbers. You multiply this little complex number by this function here, and you add do that for every single bit around here. You add them all up and then you divide that by 2 pi i, you will get the value of f at a. So why is this true? Well firstly, the start of the proof of this is that um, if that um, if this is a, a closed curve encloses a, then there exists a ball of some radius r, so there exists, this is just basically a statement, that there exists an r is an element of the real numbers uh, such that the ball around A of radius big R uh, is within, is within uh, gamma, okay? So, and the other thing to note is that any ball of uh, radius less than or equal to big R is also contained within, um, within um, the curve gamma. And then we use Cauchy's theorem to say that, ooh, what's the problem with the camera? Not doing very well this evening, is it? No, what's wrong with you, camera? Hmm, I'm sorry about that. I don't know if I can do anything about it. It's very blurry. Okay, anyway, um, I will try not to touch it. Okay, so, um, so, where was I? So, um, there are, if you take a little r that is less than or equal to big R, then all of those balls around A, all of those open disks, will also be contained within gamma. And by Cauchy's theorem, if the contour integral around this one is equal to the contour integral around this one, and is also equal to the contour integral around any of the little balls inside that, and you should be able to see that those little balls, we can get make them as small as we want. So that starts to tell you that maybe Maybe there's going to be something in this. Um, that's the hint of why this is going to be true, because we're going to get so close that effectively it's just going to become that. Okay, um, so, right, so where do we want to go now with the proof? Okay, so, um, we'll say that, um, we'll call these balls, the, the curve that, uh, the, we'll call the boundary of these balls, uh, we'll call them the curve gamma, center the a of radius little r, so where little r is some uh, real number that's less than or equal to big R. Okay, and what we now know by Cauchy's theorem um, is that 1 over 2 pi i around gamma of f of w, w minus a, dw is equal to 1 over 2 pi i, and then this integral here is the same as the one around any of these curves. So you can let this radius be any of these r's, and uh, providing you pick the correct orientation by Cauchy's theorem, or what's it? What's the name for it? The de-deformation theorem. Uh, this integral is going to be equal to. I should write in the integrand. Uh, so that integral there is going to be equal to that integral there. So that's the first step. And then the second step is something really obvious. We can write this as 1 over 2 pi i, the integral of f of a, w minus a, dw. And now I've written a, something that's completely false, and so now I have to correct it. I have to make put in something that's going to correct it. And the way I correct it is I add in this bit over here, f of, uh, what have I need to add, f of w minus f of a, 
over w minus a. So now I wrote a, a false statement, so I had to add this bit in to correct it. And you'll see that if I just combine these two integrals, the f of a's, um, f of a minus f of a cancels, and you'll get back to that. Okay, so now we're going to evaluate what this integral here is. Uh, well, f of a is a constant, so we can pull that out. And then we've got this fundamental integral now in complex analysis, and this integral pops up everywhere. So we know, th so that's basically saying uh, take the um, reciprocal function centered around A and take a curve that's positively orientated around it and we know of course that the answer to that is 2 pi i that if you do this integral uh, that you get 2 pi i therefore this integral adds up to f of a so that's just that bit uh, that should say that's not that okay so now what we want to do is we want so we now know that 1 over 2 pi oh, 1 over 2 pi i the integral of f of w over w minus a over gamma dw is equal to f of a minus 1 over 2 pi i the integral of f of w minus f of a over w minus a dw over ga integrated over the co uh, closed uh, curve gamma uh, sense the a of radius r okay so that's good now what we want to do is try and prove that this integral here is zero. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to appeal to the def uh, to the definitions of continuity. Well, actually, firstly, firstly, so that we know where we're going, let's say let's try and see what the modulus of this is. So that we want to take the modulus of this integral, one over two pi i, the integral because it's just a complex number. When you work it all out, it comes out as some complex number. We want to take the modulus of that complex number. Okay, dw. Now, it's a, what we can say that this is going to be less than, well, it's going to be less than the length of this circle, of the um, contour we're going around, uh, more, uh, because, right, so the, we want to try and bound what this modulus is going to be. So when you do a contour integral, you can think of it as you've broken the contour up into those of tiny little, oh, I should, you can't see the picture, I'll redraw it down here. If you're doing a contour integral, that's just how on any curve, then we split it up into tiny little increments of complex number. And at this point, there's some, uh, the function maps you onto another complex number. And then what we're effectively doing is taking this tiny little increment of complex number, we're multiplying it by another complex number, which corresponds to either with, to rotating it by some amount and stretching it out by some amount. So the complex number that we map this point here onto will have a modulus and it will also have an argument. So we're going to rotate this little increment of complex number around and we're going to stretch it out. And we're going to do this for every single increment of complex numbers. We'll get some new little increments of complex numbers and we're going to add up all of those uh, little um, transformed increments of complex numbers to get some overall complex number. So basically what we're going to do is we take each little bit, so we might take this, we might uh, rotate it round by a bit, so it might come out here, and then we go to the next one, we um, transform that, so we have to stretch it out and rotate it, and then we add it onto the next one, and we go along, and then what we do is we take the uh, overall sum of them, and that gives us another complex number. But what's the maximum, the maximum that, if we take a bounded curve, that it could, uh, well, any curve in fact, What's the maximum it could be? Well, what uh, what's the maximum modulus it could be? Well, all the, the maximum modulus it would be is if all of the little increments were, when you multiplied them by the value of the function at that point, if all of them were in the same direction. Because if they're not in the same direction, then they're going to add up to something with a low... Uh, they're not going to add up to the maximum mod uh, sized complex number they could possibly do. So they all have to lie in the same straight line, and then we're going to get the maximum modulus. So what we want is we want the complex number of max. Um, so we want all of the. Uh, so the maximum the modulus this could int this integral around this closed curve could ever have is going to be the length of this curve times the modulus of the maximum complex number that along this contour. Uh, the function maps you onto because if you, 
there's some maximum value this integrand takes on the um, closed curve we're trying to integrate it over. We want that, it, if we multiply that one by the length of the contour, then that's the absolute maximum modulus that the integrand could take because that says all of the little increments are going to be stre stretched by the maximum amount they can be stretched and they're all going to align themselves in exactly the same direction. That's the maximum modulus that this integrand could ever hope to have. Okay, I'm going to cut the video there because I think the camera will uh, start stop recording sound if I go on any further.